I think the number one problem with mentoring programs in firms, as I see them, is this. Nobody knows what to do with them. That's what we're going to talk about today in the Tips for the Show. Okay, so your firm's got a mentoring program and you're like, yes, there's a mentoring program, excellent. And then your mentor is allocated to you or you choose them if you're really lucky. You have your first meeting and it's like, well, uh, so what do we talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. Stuff? Right. Okay, we'll see you next time. And then you never have another mentoring meeting ever, ever again. If you are fortunate enough to have a mentor who is a lawyer, who is a senior lawyer in your firm, then you need to know how to capitalize on that situation. Otherwise, you are wasting their time and you are certainly wasting your time. You are disrespecting them by not capitalizing on the offer they have made to be an open book for you to learn from. So if you're not using the opportunity for mentoring properly, then uh, frankly, just don't take it up in the first place. I know some firms have compulsory mentoring. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, I understand why they do it, but I think it's a terrible idea because what it does is inevitably it results in people who don't really want to be there and don't know what they're doing. So if you have a mentor today, I just wanted to go through a few areas that you might explore as to how they can help you out. Area number one, depending on how big your firm is, is politics. You can get assistance from your mentor in the lie of the land. Firms are political creatures. Wherever there's two or more people, you have politics. They are political beings. It does you good to know who are the powerful partners. Who are the not powerful partners? I mean, they're all partners, but who are the people who really make the decisions? Who are the people who have successful practices? Who are the people to model yourself off if you are aspiring to become a partner in that firm? Where do the problems arise? Now, some of this you might not get. I'm not saying this should become a big gossip session, and sometimes mentoring does become that, but where can you learn the most from the people around you. You have a lot of valuable assets in your firm, in the people that are there and in the experience that they have. And your mentor is just one opportunity. If you have an opportunity to observe someone who is particularly good, say, at getting clients or serving clients or delivering technical things in simple ways, who are the best communicators? Who are the best rainmakers? Who are the best business owners? Who are the people who really know how to run a business? These are the people you can be learning from and not necessarily one-on-one. You might not have that access, but through observation, figure out what's going on. So that's number one. What's the politics? What's the lie of the land? What are the opportunities you have to learn? Number two, of course, if they are close enough to you to see areas for improvement, give them permission to be honest with you about areas for improvement. What do they think you could be doing better What are you doing well? That sort of continual improvement is far more effective and useful than the annual review process, which frankly is a waste of time and it only makes HR happy because it means they've got forms they can put on your file. It's not a useful process for actual growth. What is a useful process for growth is if you give your mentor permission to assess and reassess and help and grow you in those areas in which you might have some weakness. But perhaps it also gives them permission to identify those areas of weakness if you're struggling to yourself. So that's a second area you might want to think about. Third area is benchmarking. How are you going compared to people? You might not know. You might not have that sort of information. Your mentor, if they're senior enough, may be able to give you some feedback. What is the perception of you and does it align with the perception that you're trying to get? Are you a safe pair of hands? Are people concerned about you? That degree of honesty is so important because you may find that you're inadvertently developing a reputation that you don't want to be developing. Now, this really comes down to the relationship you have with your mentor. They need to be comfortable to give you that kind of information and they need to know you well enough to do it. And this is why consistency in a mentoring relationship is so important. If you are not honest and open with them, 
they won't be honest and open with you. So a little bit of reciprocal trust can go a long way. A little bit of openness from you and vulnerability can be helpful. And of course, respectful questioning. Now, within the context of that, I want to say that you don't need to accept everything your mentor necessarily says to you. Your mentor is not there to tell you exactly what to do. Your mentor is there perhaps to be a bit of a confidant, to be someone who gives you honest feedback, to be someone who can give you big picture strategic decision making. They might help you implement, but they won't do the implementation for you. So your job is to listen to them respectfully, to hear what they have to say, and to take the things that you think are extremely valuable to you and run with them. But you don't have to do everything. That's the nature of mentoring. It's not the same as your boss telling you to do something. The nature of mentoring is more consultation and feedback, but it's up to you to actually take steps. If you are someone who has had a weakness identified, what are you going to do? How are you going to break that down and grow in that area? What are you going to learn? Perhaps you need to buy a book. Perhaps you need to take a course. Perhaps you just need to focus more attentively on something in particular. But feel free to ignore your mentor's advice if you think that that's a good idea. So where to from there? Consistency in relationship, I mentioned it before. You need to have a consistent and regular meeting with your mentor. It's not a ticking the box situation where, oh, we're supposed to have 10 meetings. Set those meetings up regularly. Know what you're going to discuss in advance. Perhaps you email them, today I'd like to discuss, or next week at our meeting I'd really like to discuss the following things. That way you don't forget. You don't get overrun by stuff, you give them a little bit of time to think so that they can offer you some real value. So really it's this, if you want to make the most of your mentoring relationship, have a plan. Now you know by now that I think the most value you can get in terms of mentoring is going to be your legal skills because that's what I spend most of my time talking about. So perhaps you might want to round out your mentoring in those core areas of legal skills in professional growth, in communication, in marketing and networking, and in business skills? How can they help you in those areas and what do you need to grow in? Perhaps they can help you develop a plan. If you want to grow your practice, how are you going to do it? What areas do you want to do it in? What's the strategy you're going to use to do it? If they're a partner, the chances are they have a practice, which means at some point they've gone and got some clients. How did they do it? What did they do? What would they do now? What did they do wrong? What were their mistakes? How can you learn from what they did wrong in the past? What's their best piece of advice? This is the kind of information that's useful to get from a mentor. And of course, it's relationship based. There'll be some of these things that you can and cannot discuss. You need to be cautious about confidentiality. Many internal firm mentoring programs are not confidential. What you report to your mentor may get reported to other people inside the firm. So you need to be cautious about that and you need to trust your mentor an appropriate amount to ensure you're getting the most out of the relationship. So a few tips, not too hard to follow, how to get the most out of your mentoring relationship. But if you have the opportunity, take it, but use it properly. Otherwise it's an asset that you're really not utilizing to its best advantage. That's it for today. Tipsforlawyers.com slash YouTube for the channel, tipsforlawyers.com slash iTunes for the iTunes show. Leave a review, leave a rating. I enjoy your comments, I enjoy your feedback, don't hesitate to offer some further advice if you found a really great way of enjoying the mentoring process. I'll see you next time.